<laughs> Usually at night, I think about him the most. Like, how many more days he, till he comes home? What's he doing there right now? My husband, Mark, went on his first deployment back in May 2004. He didn't return home until December 2005. That was a very long time. Eddie was three at the time, turned four while he was gone. Um, I had the triplets while he was gone. And so when he came home, it was chaos. We had figured one deployment was enough, but he had a job to do, so off he went again with five kids at home, because we had had Jonathan. When Mark left, their life kind of just went kaboom. They have their marching orders. The 181st Infantry from Armories in Worcester, Gardner, and Cambridge, 670 soldiers total, are heading for Afghanistan. For the first time in our nation's military history, our armed forces are filled with men and women who are parents, 40% of them. This is an unprecedented number and represents hundreds of thousands of parents who are separated for long periods of time from their partners and from their children. Massachusetts military families have a much more complex experience of deployment because they are living in civilian communities for the most part. We're all reservists or National Guardsmen typically who get deployed, so we don't have that infrastructure in place to take care of families and that kind of family support group that you might have uh, in some of the big traditional states like Texas and Virginia where they have large military bases, so the families are kind of on their own. They tend to be older servicemen and women with dependent children, and many of them did not expect to be deployed. They have very well-established civilian employment positions that are often disrupted by the call to serve. Until you go through it, you don't understand it. You're not part of a base community. You're out here alone, or at least you think you're alone. I think you just kind of live in your world and assume that you're the only family that does the National Guard. Everybody says thank you and everybody, you know, appreciates what you're doing, but it's still kind of isolating. Hi, Mrs. Sands, how are you? My name is Jennifer Flewelling. I'm the principal at the North Beverly Elementary School in Beverly, Massachusetts. Last September, we had a brand new family in the Coast Guard that moved from the West Coast to here. They actually connected with the mom the other day. Through other conversations, very quickly after that, we realized that we had other military families and students who had military connections, nephews, neighbors, you know, maybe older siblings. Okay. We sat down and said, it's very funny that all of a sudden this has all popped up for us. I think we could do a lot of good, but, it, you know, what do you think we can do? Jen Flewelling came over to me and said that they were talking about organizing this group and would I be interested. And it was the holidays, Mark was leaving in a month, and I think I burst out crying. Go, 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 I'll see you all at library. Emotions were just very high then. You know, when you're deployed and you're a soldier, you can control your environment overseas in Iraq, but you can't control what's going on back home. So certainly, you know, I had some concerns. All right, have a great day. And it just was comforting to me 
that the school was going to take the initiative to get involved and help Sophia during the deployment. I'm going to shoot for the American Legion. We decided we had to organize ourselves, and so that's when we started with our ongoing board meetings. We brought an agenda to the table, and question one was, what are we? And I think it may have been Lisa Paracella said, what about Fort Beverly? And, I, and we, it just stuck. Maybe we can put together a newsletter. The more we talked, we came to the conclusion that we could really have an impact in the lives of kids and their families. Good morning, Ari. Danica. Good morning. Good morning, Carson. Hi, Eddie. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Happy Friday. Parents' military deployment is a stressful experience for the family and for any of the children in that family. Elementary schools are one of the most perfect places that we could begin to establish sources of support and resilience for military children. Kids spend so much of their time at school, and teachers are so important. So it's ounce. What did you forget? Um, the the N. N. Okay. The government holds the resources, and I've been overwhelmed with the amount of resources available to support military families but schools have the access, and that's the key, is that we have the relationships with the students and the families. We're with them every day, and so we feel it's our duty to serve as liaisons to connect the resources and the access. I'm Maureen Sarek here, and I am the Director of Family Program for the Massachusetts National Guard. There's a magnitude of resources available to military families here in Massachusetts. Hello. We have financial assistance, social workers, our post-deployment support, family readiness groups. Would you like some help? Any school can reach out to the military resources available to them in their state and find out what types of benefits and entitlements and programs are already in place for them to tie into. <laughs> Grammy didn't know what to do with Eddie. He's gonna paint his toenails. For me, the hardest part of him being gone with the five kids is dividing time up to make sure that they get one-on-one, -on -one, which I can tell you they don't. Um, not half as much as I'd like them to. <laughs> the boys have figured out if they wrestle or cause a ruckus, then mom comes. Wildness behavior, it's... Um, Testing, a lot of testing goes on in this house. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And Eddie Avery is in my fourth grade class, and in the very beginning of the year, I had a heads up about his dad being deployed in Afghanistan, and I knew that he was the oldest of five in the family, and he was always very quiet coming in and pretty shy. and took a while for him to warm up. If anyone has a reading log that they did get finished, you can turn that in today. As the year went on, I knew that if I talked about his dad and didn't just completely ignore the situation, he felt most comfortable sharing things with me. Mark's being away has changed Eddie a lot. He played baseball all the other years, and this year it was dragging him to baseball. He didn't want to go. His dad wasn't there. He wasn't going to play flag football in the fall. What was the point? You know, it just brings up so many more emotions. Gracie, she misses her dad so much. Just from talking to her teachers, if she has free time, um, she's drawing a flag that says, welcome home, dad. Like, everything she does is to send to her father or to hang when her father comes home. Oh, there he is. If the parent at home is coping well <laughs> and is maintaining their own sense of emotional equilibrium and managing the stresses of the household, then children, no matter what their temperament and where they are in development can continue to move forward and meet the developmental milestones that any kid would want to meet. I like that. This one's Eddie's. I think the parent does set the tone for the house. I think Mark does too, him being gone. him When they talk to him or Skype with him, it's all very positive, what'd you do? Great job in your baseball game, buddy. Stuff like that so that 
they see that he can still stay connected. I don't know what your AKO is anymore. When I Skype, it kind of makes me sad that he's like halfway around the world and I'm here and he doesn't get to be here with us. Children have to grow up with a sense that their parent is there but not there. The chronic state of having someone absent but present is a unique kind of stress for military families. Don't worry, I'll stay safe. All righty, good night. Bye. How come Dad got to teach you how to ride a bike in like two minutes and I couldn't? Because you're not a dad. <laughs> because I'm not a dad. <laughs> He's been God ever since I was in first grade. I normally have two parents watching me, and I don't really feel happy with one parent watching me. With military-connected children who are experiencing any kind of anxiety or problems at home, you know, there's any, any number of issues. They would most likely come down and have some kind of somatic complaint, a headache, a stomach ache. They're feeling really tired. With Sophia in particular, when her dad was away, you know, she would just need a little extra, um, you know, pat on the back or a hug once in a while. And sometimes she would have little ailments, you know, a little cut on the finger and need a Band-Aid, even if there wasn't a cut there. <laughs> It's really crucial to be able to maintain this communication between the team here at school. You know, I just wanted to let you know and didn't know if you had seen any other behavior. Teacher, like guidance counselor, principal, all have some input into the quality of the child's day. Go play and have fun, then I'll get you there. It's definitely not about being strong. It's about being connected. It's sharing ideas, it's sharing thoughts, and that's what I think is important here. The parent, I think, has to email and say, you know, we had a bad morning or we had a bad night and, you know, he didn't sleep a lot, and just so that they know where this is coming from. He flew from Kabul in a helicopter. No, he went to Kuwait in a Humvee. He took a... Um, and I think that Eddie was sort of taken on this, I can do it by myself, and not wanting to bother his mom. So when he comes into school, we've tried to make it a point to check in with him and see how his homework is going. Being more understanding, I think, is the biggest thing as an educator. I think in addition, one of the invisible things that an at-home parent has to cope with is the constant fear about their partner's safety the fear that at any moment your loved one could be injured, could be killed, is a really significant emotional issue to come to terms with. My answer to dealing with it would probably be I don't deal with it while he's gone. I think when you're in the middle of it, you just kind of keep going. I know the kids show it a lot more. A lot of nightmares. I share my bed just about every night with kids, whether it's nightmares or they woke up, they can't sleep. I, ha I don't think I've slept alone. Uh, it gets crowded, but... Hi, have a second? Yeah, so oh, nice great. to see you. Michelle is very honest about, you know, the concerns and worries that she has for her children. And through that honesty has given me and the principal the opportunity to really do the good work with her. I know Caroline's been up at night sleepwalking, so that means her brain is going a mile a minute. And, and Gracie's been pretty emotional these days, so. Most military spouses and partners are unsung heroes. Men and women go off to war, but they leave families behind and they leave partners behind like Michelle Avery who have to create the stability and the continuity and the routine that every family needs in order for there to be health and cohesion and harmony. Resilience in a child implies that the child is doing okay 
in spite of adverse circumstances. One way to think about resilience is sort of like the Pillsbury Doughboy. So with the stress of being poked, even if there's the depression initially, there is a way that the Doughboy bounces back. Did you know that bubbles are like feelings? Because bubbles come in all different shapes and sizes. Sometimes bubbles last for a long time, and sometimes they last for a little itty bitty time, just like our feelings. Sometimes One of the ways that we try to promote resilience at North Beverly is the bi-weekly support group for military connected students. You can be excited, you can be a little bit sad, a little bit happy. We want the students to understand that there are other students in the school that are experiencing the same type of changes and issues that they are going through every day. When my dad was leaving, um, I felt sad because I was, I was going to miss him. Okay. And I thought that he was going to change a little. You can only email us people. Resilience comes from being connected to other people that know about you, care about you, and can encourage you to continue to use your own inner resources to meet a challenge. I had let you know yesterday afternoon that we were going to possibly Skype today with Captain Avery. All right, try saying hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. You know, the children in that classroom, being able to see someone that they know, someone that is connected to a classmate of theirs, connects the child to the larger community. You want to see the medals? Yeah. <laughs> the military is not a sea of faceless individuals, but they are actually fathers and mothers of kids just like them. What time is it in Afghanistan? 6.35 at night. Wow. I think that Skyping with a soldier overseas, the entire classroom is engaged in an activity that brings an awareness to what is happening in the world, to what is happening in Eddie's life. Let's see if you can find Afghanistan. All right. I believe it inherently develops empathy. Girls, you want to see? There's Kabul now. And it creates more of a, a bond the students really come together to support these families. Um, Dad, when you come back again, um, can you come to our classroom again? Sure. As much as he doesn't like the fact that it makes him different, I know he is one that has just so much inner pride that this is what his dad is doing and this is what he's a part of. For a child like Eddie to be able to present this important figure in his life as serving a larger purpose, in this case serving our nation, that allows Eddie to feel as though his life is more fully understood in the context of his school. I just want to let you know how proud we are of you and how proud we are of Eddie. He had some golden moments that day. I was very proud of him. <laughs> A state lawmaker from Beverly is back in the Bay State tonight. His name is Jerry Paracella, and there, somebody's pretty happy to see him. He served as a lawyer for the 804th Medical Brigade, spending a lot of his time on a base outside of Baghdad. He got into Logan late this afternoon. When the parent returns home from war, it's almost as though the real challenge begins. I don't even know if your hand would fit in there anymore. We all think, oh, things are great now. They're safe, they've reunited, the family is good to go. In fact, there are many things that need to be renegotiated once a parent is back from deployment. Is that going to tuck you in tonight? Yeah. I was the only parent for 11 months, and the only one disciplining our you know, routine for bedtime and homework. And we found Dean dropping. When Jerry came back in November, he slowly got back into the swing of doing that. <laughs> Getting back to co-parenting, it's important. It, it is, it's, it's hard reintroducing them to their father so that they can see him as another authority in their lives. 
The reintegration process can bring up a variety of different emotions. How is the family going to change? You know, how is this change going to affect me? Where am I going to fit in the new family dynamic when dad comes home? So the opportunity for the parent to return to the school community closes an important loop for the family as well as the school. You have been there, the school supported them. Um, it's a way of expressing and marking an end of a shared challenge. When I got home from my deployment, um, you know, Sophia really wanted me to go back to the classroom and it, it made me feel great that, that she had this look of pride on her face when she's holding my hand and bringing me into the classroom to meet the kids. And then just to have the reaction from the kids uh, getting all excited to see me in person as opposed to just being this sort of figure on a big screen in the classroom, uh, it made me feel great. Hi everybody. When Jerry walked into that classroom in his uniform, it means a lot to these kids. There were so many different emotions that me and the teacher didn't even know what to think or what to do. Uh, we just sat there and smiled. It, it was just, it was, it was awesome. It was a great feeling. Um, do you see scorpions and animals often in Iraq? You know, they do have scorpions and they got bats and snakes. There are a lot of crazy animals in Iraq. <laughs> I think Sophia wanted to ask me a question. I actually wanted to show everybody what you couldn't do, now you can do since you got back from Iraq. Oh, what's that? <laughs> For her to be able to bring that part of her life out from under the shadows into the full brightness of that bustling classroom is the principal mechanism by which communities of resilience are built. It meant so much to me to get cards and letters and care packages, and I really appreciated it. So I'm presenting this flag to appreciate your support for me when I was over there, okay? Thank you, Mr. Right. Paracella. What do we say to Mr. Paracella? Thank you. The first thing that schools need to do is to begin to identify who military connected children are within your system. We you don't do that routinely, but it would be such an easy thing to do. You can do that through a parent survey or through your registration process or if teachers happen to know the students in their class who are military connected. In our case, we started with one student. Very quickly we realized that we had 12 students. And in a school of 400 kids, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good sized percentage. We sent out a letter from our school adjustment office announcing that we're going to begin a bi-weekly military support group for kids. And by the way, you don't have to be in active military to participate. Let them know that you're there as a support. A quick email or a phone call. Even a personal note home. I'm here. I'm aware of the fact that you are a military-connected family. I want to do whatever I can to help support you. Are you excited? The one most important thing that we can do for military children is to help them understand that they are serving too and they are entitled to and deserve our respect for their courage and their sacrifice, and that we recognize that and really thank them for that. <laughs>